Hi everybody, Chris Delion here of HobbyGameDev.com. As always, trying to share some of the excitement and interest and details about video game development and design and history with more people out there. Now, if I seem unusually psyched today, maybe you're thinking, Chris, you're looking good. Well, partly I got some new glasses. Also, finally got myself a decent webcam. The subject today is this ancient piece of dinosaur technology called a coin mech. Coin mechs are what an arcade machine uses to decide whether or not what you stuff inside there is US legitimate tinder or whatever country greatest, you know, general British. This is an old technology. This has been around for like a century, you know? So we're talking like free flipper pinball when all you had was a pegboard with nails in it and you shot a little ball up and it landed and oh, woohoo! These kind of machines from like 1930s had something similar to this to determine whether or not what you shoved in there was a quarter, right? Modern pinball machines with electromagnetic coils and bigger pinballs, those also took it, as well as Pac-Man, Galaga, all those kind of games all used this kind of device and still do if you see those games out in public. Now remember, this also isn't just about coin-op video games or even pinball machines. This is also used in other types of devices. What is a laundry machine and a laundromat besides a really easy arcade game where the reward is clean clothes? You know, a vending machine, a really easy arcade game where the reward is candy and chips. And long before we had Kickstarters and open paid betas and uh, in-app purchases and Facebook social viral discoverability plans with the Netflix and the whatevers. This was how games got paid for. We're talking before retail games. You know, the first decade, decade and a half of video games got built for using coins in these types of devices. And people kind of intuitively understand why RTS games first were used with computer mice, why we saw certain types of games designed for dual analog stick controllers different than the kind of games we saw designed for playing with flight sticks. But it's not just that controller designs affect the types of games you design, the payment models we do too. And I have a longer video about that if you're curious. Today I want to talk about how this hardware works, right? Because what a mysterious, neat contraption. This is no electronic parts inside it. This is just mechanical tests to determine if what I shove in there is a quarter. And it is magic. You know, we take for granted that when we sell a game on the App Store or in Google Play, or on Steam, or through Gumroad, or through PayPal, someone else deals with the money transaction. And there's a different set of challenges around that that have to do with security and scalability. Here the challenges were robustness, reliability, maintainability, and cost. Because unlike software where duplication's free, these have to be assembled and manufactured somewhere. These have to survive millions of quarters. They have to be really, really cheap because when you're making an arcade cabinet, you don't want the main cost to be your payment verification mechanism. So these are super duper cheap, it's just, metal parts. Now for my test cases today, I have a US quarter, kind of an older fashioned one that has the, the eagle on the back. State specific quarter from South Dakota. Got a nickel, which looks pretty much like a quarter to me, but this thing's gonna be able to tell the difference. A steel washer that's roughly the size and weight of a quarter, which someone might try to stick in there. Cut a piece of clear plastic, probably hard for you to see, but that's about a quarter. I just held it up against a quarter and cut it out. Uh, dime and penny to throw in there as well. I wanna show you how this thing does its magic. We can drop a quarter in there. So here's our first quarter. And now watch which way the quarter goes on the way out. Okay, so here's the quarter. Watch it come out. Compare that to this nickel. Went the other direction, right? Once again. So here's the other quarter. This one is the one that's North Dakota. South Dakota, it's a Dakota. Okay, see that? Here's the metal washer. That one fell straight down. It went a different direction than nickel, but it didn't flip this little switch. Because the only connectivity between this mechanical mechanism and the digital arcade electronics is this little switch down here, which if it gets flipped by a quarter falling through the correct quarter verification hole in the bottom, then it signals the machine to add a credit for player one or for player two. By the way, in the arcade machine, this goes right inside and below the coin door. Coin door is here. We have a coin quarter slot here. When we put a quarter in, it funnels it straight down into this little funnel on the top. And then it goes through a series of tests, three tests, just like any great hero, to decide whether or not it's an authentic quarter. Now the first place is this test. This is sort of a weight balancing mechanism. Just a simple little switch when the quarter goes through it, if I, I'm gonna tilt this so to trap it, it turns it and then that forms a little ramp steering the quarter on to test two. If something doesn't have the right width and weight, so I'm gonna drop the nickel in here, watch the uh, gate this time, it falls straight through. It's not the right width and weight to cause that thing to actuate to tip it going forward. And likewise, that's another place I think our, our washer may not be quite the right, uh, it's, it's a little bit, it's closer, but I can fake this, I'm just gonna hold this in place because I want to show us the next part as to once it passes that test. And there we go. There, ha. Now the washer is stuck because we have a magnet in here and that's this piece. See that? 
there's the washer stuck to the magnet, which because US quarters and US nickels and US dimes aren't magnetic, will pass right past this. If you're just a jerk and you've been stamping out quarter sized holes from sheet metal of the right thickness, think you can use those slugs to play arcade games, it's gonna get stuck in this wedge. And now the way it gets unstuck is that when you push the quarter door, which is coming from this side, it just has a little, little lever that's gonna push down on this gate. But the main consequence is, it shoves stuff out that was stuck. And that does two things. It releases the whole wall, it raises the whole wall. So if it got stuck due to thickness in there, this will help free it up. It's also sliding this metal arm behind the magnet, which is what's gonna slip and slide and force things off that got stuck to the magnet. Even if it survives those two tests, so it survived kind of this quick weight and size general check, and then it survived the magnet test, then it's falling down past this last part of the gate down here. You can adjust this screw to control the diameter what's falling through, and this can also be controlled, by the way, to contract for uh, adjust for thickness of the coin in case you want to use tokens or some other type of currency besides quarters or, or you know whatever coins people use elsewhere sorry i don't know out of the bottom there is one success hole where the quarter can fall out that's the one that flips this little switch which should be connected to a simple wire or if it fails on any of the other tests it'll fall out of one of these holes or the other we have a bigger hole and a smaller hole that the coin can fall out of i'm going to block the bottom drop a quarter in and when i tip it upright you can see right there Here's the quarter slipping its way out, push this lever, and that told the machine to add a credit for player one. If I drop a nickel through there, again blocking the bottom, when I open it up you'll see there, the lever's on this side, there it is, but now the nickel is off on this end. And so of course this end, these two holes, feed off to the funnel going to the coin return slot, whereas this one leads into a bucket or often it's just like a foil tray people will just put inside an arcade cabinet or pinball machine to collect the quarters. Before we close out, here's the uh, magnet arm. Here's the whole trap door that it gets sort of stuck in if it's the wrong thickness. If you wanted to insert one of these in a, in a main cabinet or something, you could. Uh, many people out there do. Uh, you can probably buy them by the shoebox from arcades going out of business, but they might not all work because they've probably seen their time. Uh, there's also different models. And so this is kind of a more classic steel and plastic combination. There's some sleeker, newer ones that are all plastic that, of course, avoid any sort of rust concerns or whatnot. Except the magnet, still metal. A newer vending machine that can accept different kinds of coins, different kinds of currency of that sort, and filter and sort through them. Some of those do have some electronic mechanisms in addition to similar mechanical devices like this to decide what's going on and what's being put into it. Anyway, that's how a coin mech works. The way games get paid for, including this, did affect the design just as much as in-app purchases or free-to-play or DLC or expansion packs and sequels. Basically, ways we pay for games do affect the games that get designed. If you're interested in that, I'll put the link down below for my presentation. I'll probably also put an annotation box, let's say here, uh, if you'd like to check that out. Oh, also, if you like the videos, if you appreciate that I finally upgraded my webcam to something better looking and try to do a better job on my videos, uh, please subscribe. It does mean a lot to me. It only takes a moment of your time. Anyway, thanks so much, and I'll try to have some more content for you all soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.